Hello. Hello. We are from Teenage, from Teenage Dads, Dads. And we are here We're chatting here with chatting Milky. With, with Milky. We are. So Teenage Dads formed at a Motley Crue concert in... Uh, 2015. 2015. We all went to the same school. Motley Crue school. And our teacher, he was actually really into them and we thought, we thought, you know, let's go to that concert with him. It was after a school camp. So we grew up in... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Half of that is <laughs> true. Half of that is true. <laughs> the whole of Motley Crue. <laughs> No, part of the Motley Crue stuff was true. Yeah, Miss went to that gig. We formed in 2015 at high school. We all went to the same school. Motley Crue school. That's pretty much that it. it. Then we played some birthday parties. Did some gigs, and then we did some more gigs, and now we're here in the van doing a gig today, later. It's about, about um, new perspectives. So, you know, you might like a Motley Crue song at one point in your life and then five years later think, no, I'm not really into that. And that's what I'm kind of hoping people think with our stuff is they like it at the start and then th realise it's actually not very good later. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the songs were songs that started writing like five years ago, a couple of them anyway, revisited. And uh, yeah, about how the different perspective might help you finish, finish things in your life or whatever that you couldn't do before until you went and saw Motley Crue and realised how good they were. I don't know, I've, I've been listening to a lot of Empire of the Sun. Yeah, you thought I was going to say Motley Crue, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, a lot of Empire of the Sun, a lot of MGMT as well. Uh, that little Dark Age album. But I don't know, I mean, I've always been playing synths anyway. I was more on synths than guitar beforehand. It's kind of going back to what, not that it's more comfortable, but what I'm good at. Still figuring out guitar. <laughs> Um, Here you go. I think maybe as well with some of these songs, we thought uh, taking inspiration from big bands like Motley Crue and stuff, we thought, you know, we probably can introduce some more instrumentation. However, we are very like conscious of what we can do in a live setting. We do want the songs to, uh, uh, or our live show to give the songs some justice. So it was kind of like a bit of a point of trying to add things, but not too over the top or things that would be that would take away from the song if we couldn't play it live. Teenage Dad's cover of Kickstart My Heart by Motley Crue. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, I, I reckon Teddy. Oh, it's so basic, isn't it? That's the hottest 100 song. <laughs> Maybe Hey Diego, actually. I, I'd go Hey Diego. I don't know. What about you, Angus? I'd just, I'd just play anything but at the most minimal volume ever. I'd like to show someone exit sign but um, and, and have them near the door ready to leave as a bit of a test of, you know, if they really truly believe that it's bad, that they will take towards the exit sign and, and walk out the building. But if they don't, then I might feel pretty good about myself for a little bit and that they might like the song. I think that would be pretty awesome. Don't fucking, don't say it. In the song 3AM, just before, just it's like, I guess it's a pre-chorus, but just before, like, yeah, every chorus, it has a the bass will go, and that part for me is a lot of fun, and I really, or <laughs> I don't know, I I always really like the lyrics in Exit Sign, kind of about been at the movies and stuff but I, I don't know if there's a particular line in that song anyway I just think they're all kind of there's exploring like my love for cinema and all that stuff so yeah probably the a favorite for me anyway and what Angus said as well could also say the whole Teddy doesn't live here anymore line I guess has grown on a lot of people too and it seems to be the song's kind of become its own identity in that way so yeah, I suppose that's kind of been pretty cool and um, a bit of a recognisable thing for the for the band and I guess for the EP. 
So that's one thing, but I would agree with Jord. My favorite lyrics are an exit sign. Yeah, it's kind of uh, it's evolved over the years. Lately, it's been uh, I might finish uh, the body of a song, have all the parts kind of together, and then bring it to the other guys, and we'll we'll see one if it sounds too much like a Motley Crue song, and if not, then we're all good. And then two kind of tweaking the little bits to uh, make sure everyone gets their little inflections in the track. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it though. Uh, unless Vin has something about the crew to say. Um, oh, I guess maybe this isn't entirely specific to this EP, but playing a lot of the songs before finishing them in the recording stage and stuff, like playing them in a live setting first has been pretty helpful in helping us feel out what works and what might not work. Yeah, I think like earlier in the day, like when we were playing, the, rec the songs were very much just like write them, record them and then play them. But we I think every song on this EP we played before it was finished. I'll second Vince on the audience, the audience stuff, because it is generally, it is really good to hear like, feedback before something has reached 100% getting and then just kind of fine-tuning the process afterwards and going all oh, that wasn't really nailing it it didn't really sound good another thing is um, performing in front of like studio judges like like a panel of judges as in like Australian Idol or whatever and if you get a touchdown you know that you're onto something but if if you get evicted from the show you know that the song is probably not a hit Our live show has recently been revamped in that mainly we change what order we play songs in the set and there will be some songs, uh, all, all of the songs from our new EP that um, came out recently will be on there. Yeah, it's going to be cool, lots of transitioning between songs, trying to keep the set as free-flowing as possible. And yeah, I think there should be some pretty cool moments in there for everyone to enjoy. We're going to do some Teenage Dad songs as well. I thought we were going to be doing some Motley Crue songs. They, Not, they um, have to come and find out themselves. They will. We do like to keep the sets kind of exclusive to the tours. As Connor said, gives people a reason to come back to the next one if they thought it was okay. Yeah, it's honestly, it's very rewarding. And, you know, it's kind of why you're doing music. It, the two reasons you do it, either make music and perform music so i think we're also we're very active on our socials and stuff and we do believe that we're very authentic we're not really putting on any sort of facade or whatever i, I just like to back up vin actually is only doing it for the money though money 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 <laughs> for yes the, he, vin is right in that we we love talking to fans after shows and making sure everyone's super involved in the show as well so yeah very important. Has a good time. Has a great time. Well, okay time. Motley Crew. Clag. The glue. I recently got a cassette tape that was two blokes talking about a fishing trip and I've been consuming that a lot recently. Little Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> Miley. Literally just, just a complete blank space it's just nothing kickstart my heart by motley crew <laughs> late actually not a piss take lady gaga <laughs> parcels 
And also, not a, not another piss take, but the Crazy Frog popcorn double single. I would love to play in Antarctica. Spice Girl. Spice Girl. Spice Girl, but I want to be the one that I... There's a fifth one I keep forgetting, and I keep thinking it's Spicy Spice, and it's never it's never been Spicy Spice. Um, I'd re- like to be a Spice Girl. Peri Peri Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Farty spice. Big Mac sauce. <laughs> Nerd spice. When was that Metallica gig? Uh, early 90s. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'd probably say uh, we opened for Lime Quarter Hour River Stage last year. It's pretty wild. I think that's the one of the biggest shows we'd ever played at the time. Actually, it was the biggest at the time, hey? So, yeah, that was pretty awesome. Oh, probably the the Backstreet Boys. The fifth level of the dog whistle. <laughs> uh, give up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do another one. Uh, advice is um, try. That's it. When, when I learned... Uh, the Pink Panther theme on piano when I was nine. Uh, when Connor asked me to join the band. In primary school when they asked you wanted, what you wanted to be and everyone fucking said astronaut and I really wanted that but every, I didn't want to do what they wanted to do so I just thought, oh well. Um, I wanted to be a musician when... Um, yeah, when when Vinny agreed to be in the band with me, that's when I, I realised that this is something I want to do. 